The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Trapp, the singing for Larry. Larry's away, and I'm, I'm doing the show for him today. And um, normally I do the Tiger Technician's Hour Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon uh, Eastern Time. And so it's my pleasure and my honor to be uh, sitting in for Larry. Now let's go through a couple of things. What Larry would normally be doing is be looking at the E-minis, uh, be looking at the S&P, and let's say the S&P is up 7.50. In the Chapwave methodology, let me just quickly go through what I look at. I look at a certain wave structure, and it's just a really simple thing in its core. The essence of it says you identify a left side low bar. In other words, you go, you screen back. You have to pull the screen back as far as you can, and you identify the most obvious lowest left side low bar. I say low bar because a low doesn't make it the lowest low bar. I want the actual full bar to be the low. And in this case, the low was... 1248 point, uh, 1248 in the E-minis back on the first of the week of the first of June. Mm -mm. The next week went to 1247, one dollar lower. That starts a low bar, but you don't know it's the low bar until the following low bar is higher. In other words, the following bar, the entire bar, has to be higher, and that starts a trough of importance. And from that moment, you can start counting each successively higher peak. What do we do? We go peak A. Peak A was the high of the week of the 6th of July last year at 13.50. Why? Because the next week, 13.35.50 13 13 was the high. So it gaps down straight from Monday, uh, and the entire week is lower. The following week comes right back, and then you start one, in, I usually say one penny, but of course we're dealing with the... Uh, the future, so it's 25 cents higher. And what do you do? You go 135, 1335.75, just 25 cents higher starts leg B. And that's exactly what happened on the week of the 20th of July. Now, I call this a floating letter. That's how simple it is. It just floats along at each higher high bar until it makes a peak. A peak meaning the next full bar is lower. So what happens is on the 24th of August, it goes to 30.94, and the next week it goes 1387.25. Do I care how long or how deep? No, as long as it doesn't break the low. Uh, if it was peak C, I certainly wouldn't like it to get even down to the 1300 area because that will say, hey, it's going to fail. But essentially, I really have to look for a break of the actual major trough, the, the, the signal, buy signal that went to a buy mode at, 20, at 1247. So what happens is it then goes to peak C, and then it pulls back for a week, and it goes to leg D at 1451, the week of the 5th of October, and then pulls back to where? The 200-period exponential moving average. So the essence is to look for the lowest left side low bar, and then what we're looking at is you count each successively higher peak, and the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology is to get to at least the peak D, the fourth highest peak. At that point, it can, but doesn't have to, just like we saw the high of um, the week of the 12th of April, 2013, at 1593. What happened is it went down for, uh, for two whole weeks. It didn't take out that level, and then it broke out. But that's a technique that I call a potential instant restart. It's another technique that I've developed. Or it's just a recycle as the price goes higher to E, or a continuation pattern, not a recycle. I'm calling it E for now. Why? Because from E, in the, the way the MACD, the moving average, fast moving average, red green line, if you're looking at my charts, this one here, this is a weekly chart, and the stochastic holding at 96.87, the stochastic right there, the way it's holding up, it looks to me like this is still very positive. I don't yet have a sign that it is positive enough to give a full four higher peaks, which is the characteristic of the instant restart. So, question that Dan Gringo asks, Basil, is 515 peak D on the E-mini? See, here we go, 515, five, 
Oh, 75, 70, no, 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 no. What it, sh it looks like it should be, 59. Oh, it is. I looked at it and I looked at the same letter. Oh, thank you. This is D. <laughs> I knew there was a problem because the spy, in fact, let me just double check. I think the spy matches this. Yeah, it's exactly like the spy. This is leg E up. Sorry, folks. This is leg E. Your objective is never to miss a peak. I just missed a peak. Thank you, Gringo, for reminding me. That's the only objective you have is just to read each bar. That's all. It's as easy as that. But as long as the fast-moving average is good and the stochastic is good, it's saying, hey, up until this moment, this is very, very strong action. Great. Now, um, I wanted to do a couple of other things. The 120-minute chart broke out of the E-mini. Didn't I have this all notated? Oh, this is the spy. Of the E-mini. And that says we're in leg C slash F. Now, wait a minute. Oh, you know, the, things were going so nice that you got. Why can't you just call it a brand new leg um, A, A is over there, B, C. Why? Because you see how choppy the stochastic and the MACD have become? And that's saying to me that, yes, you can go higher, but this is now also the moment where you have to have some kind of safeguard. You've got to have some kind of... Uh, security because in many ways it is becoming, the price is becoming very extended. Is it overextended? Well, I have one technique that says it is, it is becoming overextended, and that says to me it could still go to an F, but we are getting real close to some kind of risk. And what I say to subscribers is I believe that at the end of the week, we should be starting to turn down, and whether that is a consolidation, a serious one or not, I don't know. We're going to start preparing as if it could be. And there are sectors that are becoming extremely overbought in the, both the daily, the weekly time frames, but most importantly, even the monthly. And those sectors, I think, are going to be the hardest hit in time and price when that pullback comes. But it isn't often that they pull back by themselves without the general market. So I think there will be some downward impact. So let me just sum up here. In the, in the shorter term, there is still enough strength. Now, I didn't do this in my show a little earlier. I'll do it right now. I'm going to talk just about a couple of things that I like to focus on. One is the volatility index, and the volatility index went to a low of 12.26 on Friday. It bounced sharply at the open today to 13.28, but now it's pulling back. But holding in the mid-1300s, if it closes there by the end of the day, rather than the 12 at 1290 right now, if it goes into the 1270s by later today, this market is going even higher. The Dow will be up 55 to 65 points. The S&P will be up, uh, instead of 615, it will be up about 9. But if, it's, if, if the volatility index does increase, that's going to be important. Look at this chart here. This is, let me take that away, because now the Dow and the S&P have gone to new all-time highs. Isn't that amazing? We're talking about all-time highs. If the newspapers are still talking about all these, these, these negative things, yeah, they, they're important. But if, if you've been focusing on the news for the last four years, you wouldn't have bought a single stock. You would never have bought the stock. You would have just been sitting there saying, <laughs> and that's, that's just not right. That really is not right. And I've, I've focused on trying to be as independent as you can, in you, not just your thinking, but in your, in your trading, in your looking at stocks, you know, in my opening call, I very much tried to be as both disciplined for my subscribers in taking profits, trying to put the money back. And sometimes we've got out of positions and couldn't get back in. We've got a stock that's up 70% where we've only got half a position left. I'm saying only half a position. But you know what? I really don't care. It's doing so well that the money from the time we took off at one point to where it is right now, the remaining half has really more than made up for that difference in percentages. So I, you have to be very disciplined right now. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about um, the trend line that we're looking at here. This is just a very simple chart. It's a bar chart of the Dow Daily. See, it's starting to bump into resistance. You see the S&P bumping into resistance. All it says is up until now, 
from round about February or so of this year, maybe March, every time the price has gotten to that level, it's, it's had a pullback. I'm just keeping it as simple as I can. And that's it. Now, um, when I'm looking, uh, a question in the den, not a question, a statement in, 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 the, in the den. And is it, it is inaccurate to say this rally universally hated. Many have hyped it each day, every day since 2009. Um, that is really not the point. I think the point that I'm trying to make is that in there's an older age group that got out in April and May, March, April, May of 2009. And except for the money that is automatically dedicated to the market, people that I know, these are people that have been in the stock markets as long as they've been in, 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 in adults. They've always been in the stock market in one form or another. I, I know just too many people now that are, if they are in, are in a way lighter than they've ever been. That's really what I'm saying. Now, there are other people that are fully invested. That's fantastic. You know what I'm I'm just talking about as a general statement. Up until now, if you read the papers, this is the most hated. I have not yet met anyone who I don't usually talk about it, but in conversation, if it comes up and they get to know what I do as a, as a market analyst, they shake invariably they'll shake their head and say, either crazy market, when it's going to all-time highs, they shake and say, crazy market. What does crazy market mean? A crazy market means I'm underinvested. The ones who keep saying, do you think it can go higher? Do you think it can go higher? Are the ones that are invested and are really nervous. So I've never actually known as many people to be quite as nervous as, as, as the number of people that I just, I'm only talking locally. My, my you know, people that I know, who have, many have been in the market forever. And that's all I'm saying, that I think it has been probably one of the most disrespected markets for what it, it has done. It's a mega bull market. There's no question about it. There are people that have been shorting all the way from 6,500 on the Dow all the way to today have been shorting. And all you had to do, I, I never did this, but I, at times we actually did do it. But you needed to stay long as much as you can. And or even buy and hold, and there's no, you know, that's another thing that was was disrespected for a long time. But the buy and holders have done very well, or well, the people just kept adding to the market. So I'm trying to put it into perspective. That's all. And uh, so back to the market. So these, I just wanted to go through this for those of you maybe who have never um, um, heard me talk about my waveform. So let me keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to jump the big picture now, and then I want to go to some nitty gritties. Um, when I'm looking at the market. I'm talking about, I usually do a great deal of work on the Dow. Actually, I do them on all the indexes, but I've given a daily call on the Dow since I can ever remember. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things I do. The weaknesses in leg D, if I use a phantom peak, I don't want to talk about that, but all the others, the diamonds uh, in leg D, but it's the monthly charts that are spectacular. And there's the resistance level the zone we're going to. This is leg C. If you think of the chapter where it's going to D, We've still got higher highs to come. I'll be back with John and Sarasota straight after this. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. TFNN is excited to launch our brand new software charting program, The Art of the Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, Art of the Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. Art of the Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, right, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tax Technicians Hour, and we are looking at the Dow 19, SP and 460, and we're going to go to our first caller. We've got John in Sarasota. Hi, John, how are you? Very good, Basil. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. I'd like to look at DXJ. Would you mind if I looked at the EWJ, which is the core of the root? Okay. Okay, so folks, the DX, uh, DXJ is in fact the, uh, it's called the WT Japan Hedged Equity Fund. It looks very, very similar. I, I, I can't overlay them right now, probably should, but it, it, if I look at the EWJ, which is the ETF, the trading vehicle, the iShares Japan Index Fund, I, it, it will give me a much better sense because that's like, I wouldn't say it's the root. I should go to the actual Nikkei. And for some reason, I don't know why, I've not got the symbol. They changed, they did something, and I lost the symbol. And every time I've called, I've, I've forgotten to ask them about the symbol, but I will. Um, l let me just show you something that's going on, because it's, it's, it's a very similar chart in the sense that the EWJ made a U-turn. Now, folks, when you're looking at markets, U-turns can be very powerful, and the faster you snap in this cup formation through the left side high bar, and the stronger you do it, um, the greater the chances are that it's going to go higher before it pulls back. Let me explain what I'm looking at. In the monthly chart of the EWJ trading at 12.18, it made a low of 6.19 back in um, April of 2003. It ran up to 15.55, uh, more than a double, to a peak F top. Now, remember, for those of you who are just introduced to this uh, Chapman Wave methodology, what I look for is four higher peaks, but it can go higher. And in this case, it went to peak D, 
the stochastic MACD was still strong all the way to an E and an F, and then they failed, and then it tried to make a what I call it's a drop bucket pattern. It's a pattern that we're a double top pattern where it goes from the 55, uh, 1555 level down to around about 1226 and then rallies back but fails to break above. It goes to 15.16 in February of 2007. The technicals were all failing and then it smashes down to 6.84 in a left side, right side price time match. Now let me just show something here for those of you who are new to my work. In my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, there's a pattern. I used to call it the dreaded H pattern. Now I'm kind of leaning towards not saying dreaded H, just calling it an H pattern. Why? Because the dreaded H, there are too many implications there. It's just an H pattern. And very often if the left side fails, it can keep going down. But when it makes this very big arch formation, as long as the left side holds above the right side, that can be very positive. And it says it can rally very strongly. And the resistance level will be either something important like a long-term moving average, in this case a 200-period exponential moving average, or the previous highest peak. In that case, they would have been the 1383 high of June of 2008. Hey, wait a minute. It made the arch formation, and they went sideways in a kind of a rectangle formation. There's a pattern that I call the Roman candle. I'll talk about that a little bit more when I look back, go back to look at the gold chart in a moment. But this, this Roman candle of uh, March of 2011 said that if the wick, middle of the wick is taken out, it'll test the lows and maybe even break the low, which it did. So it went down to a low after hitting 11.63 back in early 2011. It went down to 8.64. Now I'm considering that this is a brand new buy mode and not just a leg E in, in the monthly chart of the, um, in the monthly chart of the EWJ. Why? Because the stochastics had a huge rally to 97% and the MACD is very strong. And it's broken above the nine period moving average for the very first time. This is the second month, so I have to wait for the full month to finish. But so far, it looks like it'll close above 11.11, .11, which is the, nine, the, the 200 period moving average. And it's gone to another left side, right side price time match in an earlier time frame. So that's very important. So I love that. Now, I'm going to ask you while I'm going to go to the weekly chart, do you have a position in the uh, DXJ? I just sold my position today in the DXJ, and I've collected some money, and I'm wondering if I want to get back in right away and ride it some more. Okay, good. So then this analysis I'm doing right now is exactly for you. It's very pertinent. Why? I've, got, I've, I, I've um, concurred uh, the, with the, the way the uh, monthly is going and the way the weekly is going. I'm calling this leg F. It could be F slash B. I prefer to be conservative. F says you've got to be careful. There could be a very sharp pullback. B says, wow, if there's a pullback, you want to be buying because that's fantastic. If it's only B because it should still go to C and D. And then I'm going to explain to you why I'm a little bit cautious going into this week in the EWJ and that you've pulled out here in leg D in the daily charts. It's good timing. I'll be right back with John and Sarasota looking at the Japanese market. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. I'm Ron Basil Chapman, sitting here for who? Larry Pesavento. My pleasure. And we're on with John and Sarah. So spending a little time here looking at the Nikkei. Now, I had the Nikkei um, up in, the, uh, in both the futures and in my continuous contract. And there was a comment made in the den that, the uh, EWJ doesn't really match the um, the chart of the Nikkei itself of the index. Well, it's the best that I can go on, and I, I you know, I I don't see too much of a difference at this particular point. So, um, but it's given me all the information that I really need uh, in terms of the the techniques that I'm I'm in, uh, I, I'm discussing. So this is my recommendation. Because I'm in leg D in that EWJ in the chap wave, and the stochastic is at 87%, real good action, but I have two signs that say that it's getting a little toppy. But a little toppy doesn't mean, you know, you see the way it's held that black line, the nine-period moving average. You can see it in the white background charts on the left here. This is the, the daily chart. Yeah. And you see the, in the black um, line in the, the nine-period moving average in the weekly, says that it, it hasn't been walking what I call, this is walking the nine period moving average, the daily. This one is running. It hasn't even come back close. My suspicion is that the EWJ will pull back and the key for both you and me, because I wanted to buy the EWJ for subscribers a while back and it just, it didn't give it, it just kept going. I, I don't have to tell you because you've been long and appreciating the beauty of this thing. The 1186 to 1168 doji high and low and the close of 11.76, that's going to be key for me. Because if it breaks under that, 11.76, then 11.58 is the night period moving average. And I think it's getting, 
close in time and in strength to saying it needs a bit of a pullback. That's going to be key for me. So I'm going to recommend um, that you have taken some money off. If it moves a little bit higher because it's a $12.19 stock, if it moves up to twelve sixty, that's a real nice percentage gain. But I don't know if I want to risk. I, I don't know if I want. If I, I would tell you right now that I would get in if this happens or that happens. I would rather say you've taken your profit, you've had it, you've thought it through, you've done the homework, you did the trade, you've rewarded yourself, you've got. I would say the maximum of this move without a pullback within. 25 cents or 35 cents that's my thinking right now or even 40 cents but it should pull back and give you another opportunity if you want to dedicate some of that money back to EWJ I would have a little patience and wait to see how 1197 to 1188 holds over the next two weeks I'll be wrong if this screams into the 1285 1310 area because what it will say is yeah I'm gonna have a pullback coming up soon but in waiting for the 10% cor correction, I might be jumping up 20%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think you've got a lot of the move out of it. I think you should be satisfied. I wouldn't hurry to get back in trying to get leg E because an instant restart very often in the Chapman Wave methodology can take you to not just a D but an E and F. If you really feel like you've made enough money that a small portion can be dedicated back to this, I would say to you, if you want to take a chance, I don't know if you do from the from the sound of your voice, it sounds like you you would you you you're not happy about missing some of the move up, but at the same time you have had a very nice profit. But if it pulls back to twelve, it's a twelve eighteen right now. If it pulls back to eleven eleven ninety seven, I would say you could just nibble at it with a with a very tight fifteen twenty cent stop. Why? Because if it's going to make a leg E, it's going to do it pretty quickly, and that E should take you very quickly to the 1225 area. Maybe pull back, go to an F, and then that'll be it. That could take much of the week. But I, I suspect by Thursday or Friday, we're going to be in a down mode in many of these markets, even if it's just short term. So I hope that helps you. But congratulations on a nice call. What, what told you to get in? I was listening to Larry uh, Pesavento, and he says it's a good time to get in, and so I did. Oh, that was that was a little while ago, right? Yes, I've been yeah. right. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, that was a fabulous call on Larry's part. I remember it well. Great call. And, you know, there's an item reversal right at the bottom back in April. Uh, I'll circuit right now so people can see it right there. It's the most beautiful island reversal, and it never looked back. Now, stocks that trade from overseas, like a Japanese market, etc., very often you'll see gaps. Gold stocks have gaps all the time. But this one... Just never look back. It is a real island reversal to to the upside. Fabulous! You got a oh, you got a beautiful trade. Yeah, you got a very nice percentage gain. I'm going to suggest that you, from the way you planned this and the way you got in, the way you held it, I'm going to say to you, for the way you trade, I suspect it'll be way too risky to do anything right now. I would wait. I'd even wait for a weekly pullback towards the. 11.30, 11.20, maybe even 11 mark if it can get there. And maybe give me a call or Larry call and let's see if that's another re-entry point. But I think you got the bulk of this move. Fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Basil. Nice job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling, John. John from Sarasota, and we were looking at DJX, which actually trades in this particular instance almost exactly the same. I had the same wave count when I quickly did it um, uh, in my work. So... That's what I'm looking at now. I must also, I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything to John. Hopefully he's still listening. I don't have a peak D yet. So it has to have a lower high bar. Whatever the high is today so far is 12.20. Whatever the high is, if it's lower by one penny tomorrow, that starts peak D. And that peak D in the 120-minute chart says that if it closes under 12.10, then the little can, the doji candle of 11.91 is going to be really critical. If it closes under that, my suspicion is it will go down and test 11.68, which is the uh, the low bar of the 9th of May. Uh, look how quickly these things are moving. We're talking about just 9th of May, just a little while ago. So, okay, let me just do this. I want. I said I would talk about IYT. We've got a call awaiting. I just want to put it up here just to say it's just the transportation index, leg D. 
MACD, very good. Just starting to tip a little bit to the downside. Stochastic at 93%. It's the weekly M-shaped pattern that I'm looking at. I'm going to be watching this real closely. Monthly is still in legacy. Very strong in the transports. I'm going to go to Steve in Orlando. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Basil. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Um, I'd like to look at dry ships, Basil, see what you think about that. Well, you know, I spent a little time over the weekend uh, looking at the, the shippers. It's been a very, very tough to trade these little guys because if you get them on the way up, you're just about too late. If you get them right. on the way down, you're way too late because they go even lower. You've got to get them when they're forming a base. And this one did a beautiful, beautiful base. But the move on Thursday, I think it was, from 192 to 218 was so quick that you saw it during the day. And then probably over the weekend, a lot of people must have said, oh, yeah, the shippers, the shippers, the shippers. And look what happens. It spikes up today, folks. D-R-Y-S is the symbol we're looking at. Dry Ships, Inc. And it is a dry bulk. It's, a, it's a, one of those container vessels. And it's trading at 217 now. D-R-Y-S is... It's, when you talk about a stock on percentage terms that goes from a low bob, a trough, to a peak A, B, C, D, even an E, in the quickest moves sometimes, this is one of those things. Now, I happen to like it in terms of a trade, a tradable stock. I'm waiting for the weekly to give. I'm prepared at this point to give up a little bit of trying to pick the low in the stock. If, if you got it in the one, 185 to the 150 area at any point, that's, that seems to be the, the range where from there it has the spring to the upside. Here's my only concern. Do you have a position in it now? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in in the low 180s. Ah, well, there you are. Okay, you see, when you're in that, that, that mid-range area, because the low is down at the 130, what is that, one, 146 area, the most recent on the 16th of November, right. it's almost like it's in the, week, in the monthly chart, not the weekly, in the monthly chart, you can see that it's trying to flatten. Uh, when I pull it across, this is a stock, folks, that was once at 131.34, is trading at what? A hundredth of the price at 1.3, uh, 2.17 less than that. So if you, you can see that it's trying its best to form a base here. Right. Here's my recommendation. So the question, I guess, from the tone of your voice, you've got a twofold question. The one is you're in it. What do I think of it as an entry point looking at the chart? And then from the tone of your voice, there was like a question mark that said, do you think that this has the potential to start a bigger move on the upside here. Is that the question? Yeah, you know, I saw it made it made that uh, the cup at the bottom in the daily. Right. Absolutely, And yep. uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty much matched uh, left, left to right. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering whether that's going to be the move and it's going to go back down and, and test the bottom again before it comes back up. You, uh, let me put it this way. If you look at EXM, I think EXM, is that the symbol? I believe it is. EXM, which has also had another spectacular jump from the point uh, 40s up to point uh, 68 or something. And NAT, which is Nordic, yeah, Nordic American tankers, they're all starting to move. And Nordic American tankers has really got a left side, right side low in the, in the monthly, but, uh, sorry, in the weekly, it looks like a monthly. But in the weekly, what's really important is the way it's walking the nine-period moving average. is at 882 right now, NAT. Here's my thinking. And I thought about this over the weekend. I thought about it even this morning because it's uh, right now. I've got, I've got it written down right here as a potential stock, but I wasn't going to get DRYS in a leg D up. I just don't like D and E's until it really proves itself. I think if you can take your position... And treat it, I don't know what part of your portfolio or your whole, in, the whole environment of your, your financial situation is. It would be really great if you were able to take the position you've got and treat it as a core position. Because on any pullback over the next two, three weeks, it only comes back to 172. I know it's a big percentage on the downside from the 180s to 172. But in the big spectrum of things, if this is going to go to three or four, that's nothing. Number one. Number two is in the thinking that I had, these guys are always late to the party. 
I remember, I don't even remember what year it was, but there was a report that South Africa had committed themselves to a, a daily rate. I can't, if I mention a number, it would be off the top of my head, but it was something like the going rate, let's say, was 175, and they were offering 220, because they had to lock it in. They were, they, they were just determined, and that was the top. So mm -hmm. I know that they're always behind the eight ball, and it seems to me it makes the most common sense, if you want to think of it as people, a, a group of investors that invariably have to spend tens and tens, oh, hundreds of millions buying these boats that overbought in the last one. They got stuck. They had to then change to double hull. It was just so expensive. I think the time is right because they're on delay for them to have a rally regardless of whether the market is going to pull back. That's my thinking. So mm -hmm. now let's see if we can verify that in the chart. We'll go back to DRYS because it's one of the, you know, I spoke about, um, I spoke about um, um, the car, the car, the car, Tesla, as the, the sexy stock uh, in this particular era. It's going to be up and down. It's going to have fantastic trades. This was the one that was the sexy one in the dry bulk shippers. It had huge moves, and it's come down huge. I think you've got a really nice entry point. I know I'm being long-winded here, but I'm trying to give a perspective. I don't want to just say to you, hey, fantastic entry. It's at 217. It's going to go to the left side high that was made just recently of 224. What was the high today? 225. It's already been there. Let's see if we can go to the next highest bar, and that's the one at 244, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather say to you, you know what? I think your entry point is actually a very good one. We will only know if the Dow closes down 75 points and the S&P closes down 9.20 in the next day or so. That's a closing price. And dries, dry ships, actually either rallies or it refuses to go into the 9 EMA of 199 to, say, let's call it 196. Because then mm -hmm. I think you've got yourself a really nice stock. So that's a really long-winded way of saying if it holds... I think that they may have turned the corner. And all of a sudden, we're now looking at not just a, 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 a trade. We're looking at a position play that says, let's look at the weekly chart that had a PD with a candle that says, if you get halfway into the candle of 228, there's a really good chance you're going to go all the way to the top of 244. So the only thing I would say to you is, if it holds, have you got enough to treat it as a core position and add a trading position to it. And that's the trade, that's the part that I would look at. And I would say to you, I would add a trading position. This is only as a trade because it has to have a much tighter stop. And the moment a trading position for me starts to make a pretty nice penny. In other words, if you got in one penny above PD, let's say 225, you got in at 226 because it was acting well, I would put a tight stop if it goes to two. 238, you cannot take a loss on your trading position. That's the way I would have it. So I want you to give you a perspective of what I'm looking at because the monthly will really improve if it breaks above 244. So that I hope that helps you, Steve. Great. Thank you very much, Basil. Thank you very much for calling and bringing to our attention. I'll be right back, folks. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Presidente. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Rob Basil Chapman. I'm going to run through this quickly, sitting in for Larry Pesavento, so let me just do this. I'm looking at the dollar, DXY. The dollar, I believe, is making a peak D at this particular point, but the MACD and stochastic are still very strong. So if there's a pullback, it, it, the, the index is at 83.93. I'm a little behind. Until the uh, 83.35 to 80.34 support is tested and broken to the downside, I have to treat this gold, what I, I've considered here as a signal to say, it's a great signal that says there's a chance that the GLD is making a successful test of the H bottom. And that, what is that? That's the pattern I was talking about just a moment ago. This is the dreaded H pattern. My CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. I talk about this pattern a lot. There's also the arch formation, so it comes into the same category as the arch formation, if I can just find it right there. The arch formation, look at this, the symmetry is really important. You see that symmetry of the arch from the left side to the right side? That's on slide 294 out of 27 chapters. It's like a PowerPoint presentation. Well, look at this. The GLD has just done that to the left side, to the right side. I should have drawn an, um, the inside wedge. This is what I call the inside wedge down to there from i did it a little quickly so i missed the actual line the right there and look what it's done is it's had a successful test so far and if it's going to be a successful rebound the rebound says that the stochastic which is at eight percent should by within four days maybe five days it should be up at about the 17 to 20 percent area the stochastics at 8.5 right now the magd has to flatten out and start to cross positive and this um, GLD has to break above 
I, you know, 13602 is the night period moving average. It's the weekly one that I'm talking about, and that is 140. It was down to 130 just uh, hours ago. So it needs to get by Friday afternoon or by Tuesday of next week. I want to see the 200 period moving average and the nine period moving average of the weekly chart on a Friday basis close above 140.69. So far, everything is looking just great. I love this kind of action. Stochastic is exactly the same thing. Left side, right side, price, time match. Wow, look at that. So I like it. Now let's just quickly go to silver. Silver's the ugly duckling of the two. It really is it's not pretty at all. But it too is making a leg after the downside in the weekly chart. There's a left side, right side price time match that I've got that has a target looking out, maybe two months time, I don't know when it is, looking out at seventeen dollars and seventy six is trading at twenty one ninety two. Just a moment ago I said to um we had John and Sarah, uh we had uh wait, that was the very first so that was Ken, that's right in in, in uh was it Fort Madison? Yes. Ken was looking at S L W. And I said, yeah, that's a much better chart pattern than the SLV, although it's, it's silver weakness, the silver stock. So it, it looks a little bit better because it's holding the down channel support in the, monthly, in, the, in the weekly chart. So I think it's a good chance for it to bounce. Let's just quickly look at the EUR USD. If that's starting to rally, yep, it's just coming off the bottom. I can't even call it a rally because the weekly chart has the pattern that is the inverse of the dollar. It has a pattern that says... If the euro takes out, closes below 1.274, the, the low of the week of the 5th of April, wow, that's, that's not good looking. That's not good looking. You know, it has to have a... Now, this is a pattern that can turn from an H pattern, the so-called dreaded H, into a very successful pattern. How? It needs speed. It needs power. But that means it has to cross very soon at 1.287. Boy, it needs to get to the 1.3... 05 area and pretty soon if it does that it could climb to 133 i'm saying if and that's those are the parameters i'm looking at usd jpy now that's very interesting that's the the currency pair oh daryl martin coming up folks you want to talk about currency pairs and stuff daryl listen to daryl great show coming up this is lake c, a peak c in the daily of the usd usd jpy should still go higher to leg d Folks, if you want to know more about it, I'm doing a, a live show. You'll go to the front page of TFNN Thursday week here in the Newton, Massachusetts area, live, three hours, and I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to mastering probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.